Hello, everyone. I'm really glad to be here with you today. Здравствуйте. Um, I want to start with two, uh, two questions. First of all, how many of you are playing games or your, on your mobile phone? Like 30%. How, how many of you are football fans? Like you're, you're watching Premier League or you watch Russian game yesterday. It was a good game. I watched Champions, Champions League. Cool, cool. I ask this because today we will talk about mobile games, we will talk about football, but most important, we will talk about the topic. So the topic is, is how to make a brand stand out. And this is, a, uh, this is agenda. So I'll introduce myself and, and audios. And in the first part of the presentation, I'll talk why this is important, especially now in the industry. I'm coming from mobile gaming, which is entertainment business. So we are competing for entertainment time, not only with other mobile games, but we are competing with football. We are competing with Netflix. We are competing even with a bottle of wine. And then I'll show you one example, one campaign that we did, uh, and one framework that we used in order to create that campaign. Uh, campaign was, was very successful. It won several award, marketing awards. But what's most important is that framework that we use, which uh, framework is re really simple and I think it's applicable for every business. Um, so my name is Marko Jevtic. I'm coming from Belgrade, Serbia, from the company called Nodius, which is a mobile gaming company. Nodius was founded in 2010. We have 160 people, more than 20 nationalities. Um, our flagship uh, product is Top 11, which is a football management game. We have one game now in the soft in the soft launch. The game called Spell Souls: Duel of Legends. Uh, so as a, uh, I bought one gift uh, for one lucky winner. So I, I bought T-shirt, top 11 T-shirt, signed by, by one famous football manager. And that football manager is brand ambassador of Top 11. Can you guess who who that is? Mourinho. Okay, pick me afterwards for the T-shirt. Yeah, Mourinho is a brand ambassador, so the game was launched in 2010. And the game was launched on Facebook, and then we switched to mobile. We had more than 160 million uh, registered users in previous six, almost seven years. Uh, the, we have users in every single country of the world. So for example, in North Korea, or even in Vatican. Uh, we have IPs from the biggest club, like Real Madrid, so you can choose the emblem and play with them in the game. Real Madrid, AC Milan, Juventus, and so on. Uh, when I was preparing this presentation, I had this example that I wanted to show, but I thought that it's really important to align with you why it's important to stand out now in the industry. And this picture illustrates uh, how crowded mobile gaming space is. You probably remember Flappy Birds. Soon after Flappy Birds was launched, this is how App Store looked like. So there are hundreds of games launched every single day, and not, it's not only about the quantity. They all look alike, so it's really hard for a user to, to differentiate the game, and it's really hard for you as a developer to stand out, to attract the user, to get him to uh, read your App Store page, to download your game, and to stay and play the game. And this is how football, uh, football category on the App Store looked like back in 2013. So there were, there were less games, but except FIFA, which was a big brand coming from the console, all the other icons were pretty generic. So it was football ball, player, manager, but pretty generic. And then in April, uh, 2013, we signed Jose Mourinho as a brand, brand ambassador. We, we, we were sure that he will represent football management uh, uh, in, the, in the essence of that. And he did. Like, suddenly we were different. Suddenly, we stu uh, we, uh, people could notice us, and, and that affected all our metrics. So it boosted our downloads, it brought, brought us the new users. And what's happened in the industry? In 2016, the football category looks like this. So we still have Jose Mourinho, but there are Ronaldo, Pele, Arsene Wenger, and so on. So now it's not enough to have a celebrity, like a brand endorser, on the icon. And what's happened? The cost per acquisition, cost per inst install is now three times higher than it, it was in 2010. So on the one side, you have cost 
of acquisition growing, and the, on the other side, average retention is 50% lower. So lifetime value of the user is dropping, while cost per acquisition is growing. And that's why we are seeing that mobile game developers, although they did only performance marketing five years ago, now they were developing the brands. So you couldn't see big games back in, like five years ago advertising on TV, and now that's that's common thing. Now you have them advertising during the Super Bowl, which is most ex expensive advertising time. Uh, games like Clash Royale, uh, Game of War, Candy Crush, they are now all big brands. And as I said, now it's not enough to have a celebrity on your icon to stand out. So that is why we are doing a lot of interesting things with Jose Mourinho, with other football players. And this is an example. This is one campaign that we uh, did uh, previous summer. So this is the framework that we use. It's it's pretty simple framework, but we often all of us often make mistakes. Uh, we we don't go to every step. Usually we only go to the campaign because that's most tangible, most visual, visual thing. But uh, our framework has only past steps and then we think you should start with analyzing market background and context because that will give you some boundaries to understand what are the possibility you should check and it will help you to focus. Then you're going to objectives. So it, it's never easy to set up your objectives, but without that, you don't know the, uh, is everything successful or not. Also, without objectives, you don't know how to make decisions afterwards. Then you need to research for insights. Uh, after that, you're using insights to develop your strategy and campaign. And now I'll show you how we use this framework to make this campaign, and I'll show you the whole campaign. Uh, so I already show you the context in a mobile gaming space, but what what was happening last year? We ha we had Euro 2016 coming, which was the biggest football event of the year. So we knew that our foot football that football fans, our target audience, will watch the Euro. That they will talk about the Euro, and most importantly, they will. Uh, in, and that's why we wanted to be part of that conversation. Also, we knew that every single brand, even uh, McDonald's or Coca-Cola, they will all show how they love football, so we knew that that's not enough. We, knew we needed to do something differently. And then we had Jose Mourinho, uh, which didn't have club back then, but he was always in the news because uh, there were rumors that he will sign for, sign for Man United or not. So we knew that he is hot for the news, if, and if we, we use him good, he can get us attention. Also, we had in mind that both Apple and Google, uh, they, they, they're having special categories for football games during the big events like Euro, so we wanted to be featured there. And then we started with objectives. We had three types of objectives, which is, which is a narrow, uh, it is never easy to make, but you need to start with something. So we had business object objectives, of course, and th then we said, okay, we want to get new users, and we wanted to get one million new users during the, uh, during the Euro. One million more comparing to the months before Euro. Then we said we want to reach new audience. We want to increase brand awareness. And, and we said, like, uh, we, in order to do that, we need to reach 10 million football fans in Europe. Also, we had perceptual uh, objective. As I told you, like every single brand will show how they love football. That's why we wanted to show something differently. And we wanted to show that we understand football, that we know football. And we wanted people to associate top 11 with that. And third, we had behavioral objectives. So we wanted to people to have uh, football management games can be really complex. So you're building your club, you're setting up the squad, you're setting up the tactics, you're playing the game, and that can be time consuming. This time we wanted people to behave as a football manager, but, not, but on the simple way. Like we wanted to give them the sneak peek of that experience. So we wanted them to make at least one managerial decision.
insights. Insights are probably the most important thing. It's like a golden mine. So if you want to go, do a good campaign, it will be much easier if you have good insights. And I would suggest you to spend at least uh, spend even 90% of the time to find really good insight. And this time we, we came with really simple human truth that all of us, me, you, especially football managers, we all make our decisions based on gut feeling or based on hard facts, based on data. And that's why we, we saw opportunity that it's a simple human truth, but nobody is using that. And we wanted to use that, so to have head versus heart. How, do you, how are you making your decisions? We saw that Jose Mourinho can represent the head because he is coming from the real football world. And we needed someone who can represent the heart, someone who, who decides with the passion, without the data, without formal foot, football education. And I don't know how much do you follow, but football YouTubers are now very popular. And, they are, and we saw them as a perfect example of someone who, who knows uh, who should play, who knows which tactic you should use, but they don't have any formal education. They don't ha didn't have any football, real football experience. So we wanted to confront Jose Mourinho and football YouTubers. Strategy to achieve our objectives uh, was like a funnel. We wanted to to have uh, to we wanted to have uh, three part three stages of the funnel. So we, first, we wanted to have content that can that can reach a uh, um, um, mass audience. We wanted something that is funny, entertaining, entertaining, something that is shareable, very accessible. Usually, in marketing, that kind of content is a hero content. And after that, we wanted to retarget uh, the, uh, the viewers. We wanted to retarget people who saw the hero content and give them opportunity to, uh, to decide as a football manager, to give them the sneak peek of that experience. Also, we wanted to be relevant with you in 2016. Uh, when you're advertising on someone's Facebook wall, you, you need to be relevant to that person. Otherwise, you're spamming it. And then, of course, we wanted to bring people to play the game. And this is hero content. I'll, uh, I'm going to show you the video, what we made. So this is going to be your ear, please. Just, uh, put it in your ear. running here we go and in your own time action Hello and welcome to Head vs Heart with Top 11, the Euro 2016 panel show. I'm joined by two titans of the YouTube game, Patrick Van Straten and the main man himself, David Jackson. They have managed to scale down their players to watch at Euro 2016 down to a few names. Patrick, who should we keep our eye on? Who should the fans be looking out for? Uh, well, the Spanish midfielder, Coque. He's an excellent attacking midfielder. Then Kevin De Bruyne. I think he's one of the best counter-attackers in the world. And in a similar vein to that, Antoine Griezmann from France. Davo, what are we saying? Anthony Martial. I Martial. think he looks absolutely amazing. What like, a player. Who's going to be winners of the tournament, though? That's the big question. I think it's going to be the Germans. They know how to win. Pato, what are you saying? France. They've won two international tournaments, and both of those were in France. It's uh, a great stat. The Germans still don't have a lot of strength up front. Are you ready, Jose? The out-and-out -out striker they're taking, I think, is probably going to be Gomez. Austria. They want to take a thousand-year-old. Austria. They have... Oh. Austria. One of the fastest improving... Yeah, yeah, the most improved team in Europe. Qualified with nine wins from ten. Qualified oh, wow. nine games out of ten. Oh, Dave, she schools you, mate. Yeah. Talk to me about Austria, Dave. They've yeah. got... Yeah, they're, 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 they are, they are, they are like pretty good, Austria. They've got... They've got Alaba, who's fantastic. He's, what, 42 it's caps, he's 23 years of age. He's won the Bundesliga five times, won the Champions League, World Club Cup. I hope, I hope, you, I do actually hope you're filming this. You are actually better at this than us. All right. Dave, move up. No, you're forgetting Mark Yanko. We are filming something here, all right? Yeah. Do you want us to redo the France bit then without the... Sorry. Austria. Yeah, uh, but... <laughs> I don't know very much about football. 
Right, potential upsets now, lads. Who could be the dark horses at Euro 2016? Patrick, England, maybe? Maybe England's. Uh, they're certainly not favourites. My dark horses are probably going to be Wales. The Welsh. If they can get out of the group... Poland have just lost twice in two and a half years. years. And beat the German in that time. And what about Poland? They beat Germany in qualifying. Lewandowski. Lewandowski, mate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's got a 62% shot accuracy at Bayern Munich. Please, just stop it. Just putting it out there. I actually want to hear more. I, I, I don't want you <laughs> presenting this. Do you, all right, you can hear more. Do, Wolfsburg. Do that fantastic game against Wolfsburg. I'm not taking the piss. I'm, five goals in just eight yeah. minutes and 59 seconds. Eight minutes, five goals in that eight minutes, 59 Wolfsburg. seconds. Boom. It was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> right, our last section. Both of you can select five players to be in your dream penalty taking lineup. Who are they? Name them. Sus Fabrias. Kane. He's putting it in. No, 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 because it's actually a stupid question because it isn't actually about players, it's all about managers. When you're talking, oh, that well, it is when you're talking about penalty taking because they're the ones who make the decision. They're the ones who are looking in the eyes of the player. And you can't judge that. They've seen him on the training pitch, they've seen Very him. Good you point. Know. Yeah. Are we real you know? with this? It absolutely defines what a good manager 100%. is. And only the really special ones, you know, can yes. do it. Franz Beckenbauer, Sir Bobby <laughs> Robson. That's decent. Yeah. You know, yeah, Jose so. Mourinho. Jose. Come on, he's joining United in the summer, so he better bloody be good. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's go. Most played international will be held at Euro 2016. Jose. Name. Oh, yeah. shit. Oh, my. Uh, Oh, my God. Yeah. It's an honour. I really don't know very much about football, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but your man does. Are you serious right now? <laughs> I think you knew more, more than these two. Yeah. I think we got you. Jose, mate, you've stitched us up. Oh, man. That's a pleasure. Nice to meet you. Jose, it's an honour. I'm a disaster with the penalties, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always lose to. I'm, I'm like England. <laughs> you can't be that bad, Jose. You should bring her on as a scout, mate, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> she knows her stuff better than these two. Next club she's really? coming. Bye, guys. <laughs> mate, Jose. Jose! Dave's sweating like a pig over here. <laughs> <laughs> what a bloke. Ghost of Bobby Moore's next. <laughs> Ghost of Bobby Moore's next. <laughs> that was actually ridiculous. Jose. Oh, my. So what's happened? Like, the Football Daily is really popular YouTube show in the UK. A few days before Euro, we launched this video, and video attracted, like, it, it, it was a viral success. Video attracted, like, we had more than 10 million views on Facebook and YouTube. And then we had, like, uh, we had uh, custom audiences that we could retarget. And, uh, and now, now we, we will go to this tactical part, but that day, like, no, uh, nothing was fake in this video. So that day was one of the most stressful day, days in my life because we were in the studio, YouTubers were there, uh, and we were waiting for Mourinho, and then somebody wanted to break in Buckingham Palace in London, and you know how it can be in London with traffic jams. So we were really close to cancel everything, and like we invested three months of preparation in this, and everything was so close to be cancelled. And then finally, like uh, Jose Mourinho came, and from the beginning he was really uh, he really enjoyed the idea, and he was really natural during the shooting. And people could notice that, and that's why journalists wrote about this video before you. And that's that's why the video was successful. And I'll show you the whole final, and I'll show you the whole experience that we that we made. It will be a sneak peek of the first video that you saw, but it will be much shorter. Top 11 was already the most popular mobile football game in Europe. But the question was, how could we at Nordius get an extra million players to play our game? by getting football fans actively involved in Euro 2016. Who's going to be winners of the tournament, though? That's the big question. I think it's going to be the Germans. They know how to win. France. They've won two international tournaments. Euro. Austria. They have... Oh. One of the fastest improving... Yeah, yeah, the most improved team in Europe. Qualified with nine wins from ten. Qualified nine games out of ten. Don't know very much about football. <laughs> the creative idea behind our campaign was based on a simple human truth. Managers either make decisions based on hard facts or gut feeling. I'm a disaster with the penalties, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always lose to. I'm, I'm like England. 
our Head vs Heart video became Top 11's most viewed and shared ever. But we went even further. Before every game, our journalists in three countries took trending headlines and fed them into Google's new dynamic lightbox banners. These flexible creatives could be updated in real time with relevant questions and were then targeted to viewers who had watched the video. The final step was to challenge them to play Top 11. Hi Jesse, Josie here. Well, how do you suggest I set my teams up? Um, all right. As a result of our campaign, Top 11 saw 1 million downloads more during the Euros as compared to the month before. We now look forward to see if our new managers will play with their heads or their hearts. So for us, Euro was really important because our main competitor was sponsoring the Euro, and and we and we didn't he, uh, have opportunity like to work with officially with Euro, and that that's how and that uh, that's why we needed something big. And then we had more downloads than the competitor who had the uh, the Euro license, had the Euro on the icon, and so on. The campaign uh, was successful. You saw the results, but we also won Lavi Award for this campaign. Uh, we are finalists of Drum Content Award and Shorty Awards in New York. So I can repeat again, but. It, the framework is really simple, and I think you all know it, but the problem is that we are never using it, and we always go and create campaign without thinking about the context, without setting good objectives, without really good and simple insights. And to conclude, if you want to stand out I think these three pillars you need to have. Like you need to attract attention. You saw how it's difficult uh, these days to attract the user. You need to change behavior. When we were launching the video, we wanted journalists to write about our video. We wanted them to write about football management, and they did. Like we we needed the content, good, for, good content which is good for them. And then we change uh, the topic before Euro. Like everybody, even sports, Google, Gazeta della Sport in Italy, Marca in Spain, Metro in the UK, they all vote about this video two days before Euro. And then commercial results without thinking how you can make the whole final, the whole experience, and bring results. Eventually, uh, you shouldn't like develop anything. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Marco. We have some questions, yeah? Dobar dan, Marco. Okay. Uh, you told about uh, market uh, background and context, and uh, I think now one of the most uh, um, uh, crucial market backend is uh, world champion, which is coming in Russia next year. Uh, so what I would like to say is uh, if you prepare something for Russian users about it and uh, are you looking forward to attract some users from Russia or maybe you currently attract them? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, yeah, we are preparing something for World Cup. World Cup will be the biggest global event in like next year. So yeah, we are preparing for that and we are also trying to develop this region much more. Because top line, top line, like as I said, uh, we had more than 160 million registration, we are played in every country, but in this region we are not so big. Like we are the biggest in UK, Germany, Southeast Asia, South America, but I don't know why, and that's why I came here also to discuss, because I think Russian loves football, so I don't know what's the challenge. Yeah, thanks. And uh, what I would like to ask if uh, if you're targeting the country where football event to take place, or you just use this football event to attract uh, worldwide uh, uh, worldwide yeah. with users or or locally? Yeah, it depends. For the World Cup, we will do something globally for sure because everybody will watch World Cup. But something locally, we will also develop for Russia. So yeah, we are doing like, uh, usually like we are covering global markets all the time and then in some specific periods, we have local campaigns and we run them, run them throughout the Europe always. Any more questions? 
I have a question, Marco. So uh, you'd say you are working, you know, with influencers, and uh, do you pay quite a lot for the influencers? I mean, how much do you guys pay? And if uh, you see the amount of downloads that they bring to you, or installs rather, um, you know, what is the cost per install that it works out at? Yeah, influencers, football YouTubers, they are now one of the biggest channels that we are using because they are bringing high quality users. The cost per install is uh, lower than on Facebook, for example. So everything fits like, but we are trying first to build relationship, not to pay. Uh, and we sponsored, sponsored few, few YouTubers. Uh, one is really famous in, uh, in UK. Uh, his name is Spencer FC. He even has uh, hashtag United, which is football club, which is competing with other football cl clubs. So we are sponsoring the club and we are, we are trying uh, not to do only paid video. We are trying to build relationship with we are trying to get them to play top 11 for for months on their YouTube channel. Great. But uh, I can suggest you to try if you haven't. Like influencers are really a uh, great channel for user acquisition. Great. Thank you very much, Marco. It was really interesting Thank and you. cool video.